my name is Chrissy Clements. Everyone watches accesstv.org. <laughs>
in um, in western part of Africa. Okay. You know, and you need to. This is something people don't pay attention to. People don't study, search. Okay, we've heard this about Africa. Okay, let's go further and check out what the, what the, what the stories are. You know, Africa is made up of um, you know there are two, the modern and the traditional. Right. You know, you have modern settings and you have traditional um, settings and. You have the urban and you have the rural, which we call the village and, you know, certain, you know, but all of these um, have their own uh, role they play in people's lives, you know, right. but people should not just assume that Africa is jungle, Nigeria is jungle and you see lion walking on the street and snakes and everywhere, you know, that's total opposite of what's right. reality. Let me ask you this: as as a young as a young child growing up, <clears throat> what did you do uh, with your leisure time or free time? Uh, what was considered entertaining in the United States? A lot of people play sports, listen to music. So, uh, a child in Africa and Nigeria, what would they do for uh, for for fun? I mean, it's not different. I mean, every child, I mean, children does the same kind of thing that everybody do. I mean, I think it's. It's universal, you know. Um, I knew growing up, I was an enthusiast of um, soccer, which is a common thing that you know young people engage. You know, soccer is a big thing in Nigeria, and I used to play ball. I used to play soccer, and you know, there are people do also all sort of different things like you know, partying and music and going to the club and socializing among among peers and friends and. You know, um, and we take our family very seriously. You know, we try to engage ourselves in family activities and trying to help your brothers out and trying to, you know, just be there for your families. We consider that to be um, um, what you call social activity or you know, that kind of a thing. Okay. Uh, one of the things that you often see too, uh, the pictures of the news with civil war and soldiers in the streets with guns. Is that an experience that happens in, in your experience in Nigeria, or is that something that you think the media just kind of pushes on us as a, as U.S. citizens? Well, I mean, um, those are true, you know. But in Nigeria, we don't have we we don't have experience of war, or I mean, we fought our own war in the past. And but there are things that Nigeria is constantly known for, which is um, conflict between ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. You know, which is often politicized. You know, their political dimension to that, and then. Uh, but um, what I would like to say about that is, um, conflict props up in, in all societies. All societies have their own challenges. You know, um, um, we don't have the experience of war, and we don't hope to have that kind of experience. But I think the media, the media in the United States. Um, I don't know if it's, um, it's part of the agenda, you know. There are a lot of good things that is coming up from Africa that people don't know about. But once there's a little conflict, the media goes there and, you know, and just beam at the negative side of whatever is going on. And that's, that's, that for me, it's, um, it's a challenge that I think um, African ex expert in African studies and African development should step up to. You know, but I don't know if it's an agenda. When you even come to class, the statistic that is always, you know, put up in the class, try to to demean African as like diseased continents, poverty reading, everybody's poor, everybody's, you know, that kind of thing. That's that image. It's um, it's correct, and it can also be incorrect. And we, we, we it's something where we can talk about and argue it out right. where the cause is well, who and who is causing all this problem now let me ask you this though but when you're say you're in Africa is there American influence so before you get to America uh, we, when you got here in 2008 that have you ever been here before no so so in Nigeria what is the American influence do people in uh, Nigeria say what about America Nigerians love America I have a young brother who died to come here, you know. I mean, I, I mean, before I came here, all I knew about America is um, it's in the books. Right. You know, I read so much about America. I listened to America. I'm a very big fan of country music. <laughs> you know, I grew up. I grew up as a country. Fan. My my dad was a co big country fan, and you know, he introduced us to consciously or unconsciously introduced us to country music. You know, 
I love country. I love United States. I, you know, but when I came here, you know, I was expecting to see that, okay, oh, this is the most greatest country in the world, the land of the free and the land of, and true to the word, America is a land of the free and has a lot of opportunity for people to excel, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, like I said, every, every society has their own challenges. Right. You know, America has its own challenges too. And there are things that people don't know outside, about, outside of the United States about United States that United States is not really portraying to people for them to understand that. Let me ask you this though. So, <clears throat> when you hear physically in the United States, we have strife amongst classes, meaning uh, people that have and have not, and also race. So, like how you were explaining how we portray Africa as a country, do people in Nigeria, in your experience, do, do they, is race the issue when America is portrayed outside of the United States saying like, uh, do they say blacks are in a better condition or blacks are in poverty, blacks are criminals? No, like I said, you know, every every country has its own peculiar. No, I'm, th I'm no. talking about what, what do Nigerians think about Americans? No, Nigeria generally we think about Americans as America to be perfect, like a uh, um, this is um, a perfect heaven, uh -huh. um, no blemishes. This right. is an easy way to live, like <laughs> you know. But I know it's not. I know it's not true. But before you, know, you got before here, I got here, I know okay. because I always you know I've been in school. I you know I've, little I've, I've read about United States. You know, countries and societies have their own challenges, but I didn't know how what the challenges are right. until I got here. Now, um, in Nigeria, we don't we don't look at race. We don't see race. Mm -hmm. We don't see color. We see language. We see we see ethnicity. When you speak, I can tell which part of the country you're from. So certain parts are considered to be better or worse as based on where you're at in uh, different regions? No, you, if you're talking about inequality in mm -hmm. terms of, um, um, there's not too much gap between the people of Nigeria or who live in Nigeria. But if you want to look at the urban setting and the rural setting, it's a very complex thing to discuss. Because okay. even the urban set, the rural setting tend to, I don't have the statistics, but I think people in the rural area live better life than people in the city. You know, because the city is um, is an urbanized setting with a lot of um, uh, infrastructures are broken. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say that okay, well, because I live in the city, I'm better off than the people that live in the in the rural area because they have access to um, uh, good food and access to you know natural than people that live in the city. Now, one of the things, and that's interesting what you said because one of the things that uh, that goes that happens in the United States is education, access to education, the level of education. So you're educated, you're, you're here at the University of Connecticut. <coughs> uh, what is the access to education? Is everybody in Nigeria, do they have access to education? Or or you have to be of a certain class or certain? Uh, now, let me let me say this, and this, uh, I don't have a statistics to back up this, but this is just my observation. I mean, I'm trying to compare um, what I see in the United States, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to make sense of what I what was obtainable before I came here in, in Nigeria. Now, before I came here, governments play a role in, in encouraging people to go to school, and sometimes government pay. I mean, there's a. I went to school. Um, how much I paid for school was less than fifty dollars throughout my stay in school. Through, through your advanced education or yeah through my my bachelor's your ba okay my less bachelor's. than fifty dollars yeah. oh, okay but then it's very hard to come by fifty dollars yeah <laughs> it's very it's very hard to come by but the thing is school is not expensive right for you to go government encourage you to all you need to do is to pass the exams to get into school right you know but um things have changed you know I mean when I when I was when I was doing my first masters in Nigeria. I realize that things have changed, and things have changed because people are trying to look up to the American system. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, government should not come into go into into policies like education that people should um, the private, you know, whatever should be able to. Government is, is a waste of time for government to come into trying to help people to go to school. You know, but if you look at Nigeria, the socio the socio what do you call it, the socio demographics of Nigeria, more poor people are out of school. And governments feel like the best way to to help people is to make sure that everybody um, has uh, access to education. Right. So government try to come in 
and encourage people to go to school. So a lot of people are going to school. Right. A lot of people go to school um, in Nigeria. Are, um, compared to the United States where um, I'm still trying to understand the dynamics of American. So let me ask you this. So obviously uh, you mentioned you have a master's in Nigeria. You're at University of Connecticut seeking a second master's. Mm -hmm. So education is important to you personally. Precisely. So where did that come from? Did that come from your family or that came from something? Is your, are your parents Oh, educated? yeah, my dad. Your dad? Educated? Yeah, my dad, my dad, my dad. I remember one time I went to, uh, my dad used to work at the airport, you know. Um, you know, he would take us to his office and he'd say, okay, look, you see this office? Make sure your office is better than my office. <laughs> you know, for me, that's a very powerful statement to say that you have to buckle up. And, you know, when I was in, when I was in high school, I'm always scared of going home with bad grades because right. my dad would be displaced. So right. you know, you work hard. You know, he's he's always been there. You know, so that you know, I think. Um, so he set a standard. Yeah, he, he set, set, a, set yeah, a, standard. a very big standard. Yeah. All right. So yeah. what about you? Mentioned brothers and sisters. Are they all educated? Oh, everybody, 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 educated. Everybody educated. Okay, yeah, everybody's yeah, educated. That's yeah. interesting mm. because in the U.S., that that same argument is made that the family helps support the child, which right. which which uh, yeah. will help them move forward as far as education. And, and other things like that. Uh, we'll talk about some of your experiences here in, in the United States. Uh, so when you first get to the United States from Nigeria, how, how do you think that you were welcomed by U.S. citizens? I, you know, my experience is, um, it's like me welcoming, <laughs> I was the one that was welcoming Americans, you know, into my life. Right. Because um, what, I, what I was expecting was not what I got. You know, and that's, I felt jolted by that. Okay. You know, because I was like, okay. That whole, oh, that whole, everybody. Everybody great. like, oh, <laughs> this is a land of, you know. <laughs> you, know and, you know, a lot of people make mistake about that. Right. So I'll explain, you know. Like, okay, I was down to earth with everybody. And people were like. Right. Withdrawn. Right. People, I, when, I, and I didn't we're, in America, we're, we're, we have this big thing about race. So when you say people. If you could distinguish black Americans or white oh, Americans. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, um, I think mainly white Americans okay. and some black Americans. You know, and uh, this is a big thing. This is a big thing for me because I still feel like um, I'm affected by that. You know, and I, every immigrant that's coming to this country should have a background, you know, study of what's the social. Uh, nitty gritty of American society is. I'll explain to you. Now, uh, when I came to this country, I came with a very big heart. Like, okay, yeah, I'm going to contribute my my quota to, to <laughs> You're development. Change the world. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like you know. So I started reading, you know, reading and studying, going to the library, and um, you know, but I wasn't really accepted the way I want to be accepted, you know. And what I found out was because of my accent, mm -hmm. the way I talk, right? People don't even want to give you a chance to even explain yourself, right? Your viewpoint doesn't matter to anybody because of your accent. You know that's that's a huge problem. Sure. So if you want to contribute to the development of Africa, America now, you have an idea. I remember going to the library in Vernon and trying to speak with the librarian and trying to like this is what I my proposal and I think we can have it. You know, <laughs> but okay, took my number. Hey, she never called me back. Right. You know, so that kind of a thing is very very. Um, it's I don't know if it's ignorant. Well, what do you think? Because the accent. And having lived in other regions of the country myself, one of the first things, and I could, I, I'm not gonna even attempt to say I can relate on the level that you might have experienced, but being from the north and living in the south, uh, as soon as I opened my mouth, that became something that was recognized. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're educated. Do people, when you tell them that you already have a master's degree, you're pursuing another master's degree, does that take somebody back? Do they think? Or, or I think it, there's a stereotype. There is a stereotype, and I don't know if it's my gender. Um, regardless of whether you have a PhD, mm -hmm. you know, you know, if you want, if you communicate with somebody, and you speak to that person, and he hear accent, he doesn't care. He doesn't want to know whether you have a PhD. He right. just He's he just cut off. Act, right. Okay. You know, and and that's very very that's um has an emotional um, impact on the person that you're. You know, we, we, we also know body language when you communicate with me, your body language. I can understand it, right. you know. So people, I, what I think, um, what I think is, you know, accent. There are some accents that just 
tolerated in the United States. There are some that is not tolerated, you know, right. because people can tell, oh, you're from Africa. Right. People can tell right away. Right away, people can <laughs> tell. And once they just draw the line, right. Regardless of your intelligence, regardless of your opinion, regardless of how you know sophisticated you are, right. The more you speak, like you, you are from, you are from Africa. So how, how that's you, a barrier. Yeah, it is a barrier, absolutely. But yeah. how, how do you? How do you bridge that barrier? What would you think that, uh, you know, because when you were in Nigeria, are there Americans on the ground in Nigeria? Not just visiting, I'm talking about kind of getting involved in the culture. In, in well, I, I think because of the way that African society is structured, when somebody comes from somewhere, you don't really pay attention, it's just among us. Okay. You know, but when I was in the school, system, school setting, I see people from United States on Fulbright scholars. White people or, or African? Oh, American? both African American. See, when you see the African American, you don't know them. You right. don't. You don't until you you come to talk with the students and like, okay, I'm from the United States. Uh, United States I'm from, because they become part of us. We right. don't know you. Right. You know, but when you speak with us, you come to present do a presentation. That's when we recognize. Oh, he's from America. He's from you know. But when a white African uh, sorry, white American comes to to the university starting to give a talk. I've seen a couple of them when I was there and give a talk that I disagree. Right. You know, you can tell. Right. And a lot of them are arrogant. Arrogant. In the way they, they <laughs> present their case, you know, and I've, I've heard people shout them down sometimes. Their statistics is not, does not really conform with what's on ground. Right. Know, that kind of a thing. So when an African-American comes to Nigeria, you know, we don't know them. We don't know them. But we treat everybody like because we have the same skin, skin color. Right. Yeah. So let me let me ask you this: in 2008, you came here. So you came here in in an electrifying time. What when did in, in 2008? It's important because that's the election year. Were you here yeah, before Barack I, got elected, or yeah, I, I was here before Barack got elected. Before he got elected, yeah, what was your family and people in Nigeria? What were their thoughts about America having? Uh, African American president. Oh well, it was very electrifying. It was, I mean, I very electri electrifying. You know, before I came, okay, let me tell you the story. I was working with a professor in northern part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and um, we were discussing about American politics. And he said, um, "Forget about Barack Obama. He'll never be the president. He's, he's a black man." I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, I don't see it that way, because America has also changed in a way because. Um, this is a very smart, intelligent young man. And then uh, you have to also look at um, the age. Um, young people are more, uh, um, he appeals more to the young people. So it's not the older folks that will put him into office, it's the younger folks. My, the guy was like, no, 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 America is, you know, that's his own stereotype about America, that America is, um, no black man can be the president of. Right. You know? But I was hopeful and very optimistic, and I, I, I was able to look at the studies and like, okay, well, this, this guy appealed to younger people, he'll be elected. Right. And that was exactly what happened. Absolutely. And I'm trying to get back to the guy and tell him, look, sir, <laughs> you were wrong, I was right. <laughs> you know, but it was very electrifying to see a black man being the president of the United States, regardless of the challenges that he's going through. We know his records, we know what he's doing, what he's capable of doing, and how that, you know, elevate the spirit of the blackness in me. <laughs> right, right. So it makes it's proud. Let me ask you this. So now we're in the United States. Uh, you're in the United States. You're living in the United States. You're becoming part of the culture of the United States. Uh, what do you think or what do you see as the struggles for Americans, black Americans, as you as you interacted with, with Americans of color? Uh, <clears throat> it's a complex thing. It's a complex uh, situation. One, um, there's identity crisis. Um, whether you're a black person or you're American or you're from Chicago, it's, that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's a huge, that's a huge thing for African Americans to really resolve among themselves, you know. And I've had this co conversation, and it's an, it's an area that I'll, I'll, um, I, I tend to have a little knowledge about. I know when you have multiple identity, it becomes very difficult for you to really pin down where you actually belong. Correct. You know. So, and that's one of the challenges that I see in African American people tend to like, okay, I'm black. I'm tuned to the motherland. I've, I've heard people use that motherland, motherland, motherland. It means connection to Africa, right? <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then, they still love America. That's it's a good thing. Right. It's a good thing. But you know, um, the policies, the policies is not too much in favor of African Americans. You know, 
it's not so much in favor of American American. But I think um, the more African American engage the polity. Look at the Latinos. The Latinos are the most popular minorities in the United States. Correct. Nobody ever imagined that. I thought American African Americans would be like the largest minority groups in in, in, in the group in the, in the United States. But you see, things can change, you know. But what I would advise African Americans to do is um, engage the system. Um, no standard is too high. One advantage that people um, people people feel like um, African Americans are disrespectful, rude, unpatriotic. These are wrong right. stereotypes, labels. These are wrong things. I, I hear that and I feel it and I've read it in the books. Right. You know, and th these are very, very wrong uh, insinuations. So you, you know? do you think that African Americans are are that way or is they are not. They're, okay. They are not. Given the opportunity, the, given the same opportunity, anybody can get to anywhere. Right. You know. But you know, you can feel and see some barriers that try to obstruct. All right. Now I know that you're working on some things. What are some of the things you're working on personally here uh, in while you're in the United States? Well, um, right now I'm um, I'm interning with the um, International Institute of Connecticut, and one of the things that I'm doing is to organize um, the Connecticut Immigrant Day, which is um, and next month, next next year before I graduate, uh, but I have a project in Ghana, and um, the project is about um, child. I'm mean, elimin eliminating child child labor in the fishing community in Pram Pram, Ghana. You know, so the whole idea is how do you strengthen the family system in Ghana in order to release these teenagers that are engaged in fishing activities at the shoreline to go to school. So. Um, so I mean, I've done I've done my first um, research, and I'm going back to do to test the hypothesis to see whether things are st have changed or things are constant. But right now, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, I, I'm really working on how to, you know, to organize the immigrant Connecticut immigrant day, and I'm looking for volunteers and people that can help, you know. Um, make this happen. All right. So, uh, people want to contact you. They can email you if they want to get involved with your project. Is that correct? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, my email is there, right there, and my uh, my phone number. You can contact me. My name is Rashid, and you know, let's get rolling. All right. So we we got, you got a few more minutes. President Barack Obama is he going to get reelected? It's tight, but he will. You think he'll get reelected? I'm very positive. Do you think that? Uh, he's going to get reelected by the support of African Americans again, or has he kind of migrated to be this figure that all Americans will support? I think all Americans will support Barack Obama because of the issues, and I think um, his bigger constituency is the African American community, and um, and I'm very positive that America, African American community will put him back in the office. All right, and I, young people too. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Rashid. Uh, I think our viewers will, will definitely kind of hopefully have a different perspective on Africa and the need for us here in the United States to be better connected with uh, persons and people of Africa. Uh, I do believe that uh, a lot of the strife is, is, is rooted in ignorance. So hopefully uh, through brothers like yourself and, and, and other people, that our natives of Africa, we can start bridging that gap. I really want to thank you for coming out and sharing sharing your thoughts with it's, us. Today. It's my pleasure. Can I have a last word? Yes, go ahead. Um, this is uh, um, so this this is to um, young African Americans and everybody uh, Americans alike. Um, anytime you hear anything about Africa, I want you to do the research. Do the research. Don't draw conclusions and find out what is it. Is it true or false? It doesn't take ten minutes to find out. Okay, Google. Africa, what's going on, and look at the causes and All right. consequences. All right. Thank you. Yes, man. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah.